Kia ora. My name's Anita and I am Neats Marie Reads and welcome back to my channel. So I thought I would do my September wrap up. So I'll go through the seven books that I read in September. So reading seven is huge for me because normally I read anywhere from two to maybe five books a month. But I don't know, something about September I was on like a really decent roll and I'm going to put that down to the fact that I read thrillers, mainly thrillers and as you should probably know by now, that is my favourite genre and I can tend to get hooked if it's a good one. And yeah, I think that's why I read so many. So I'll jump straight into it. So one of the books that I read in September was None of This Is True by Lisa Jewell. Now this is her newest one and it was so good. I just absolutely loved this storyline of like creepy, stalkerish type girl. So it's about a lady named Josie who meets a woman named Alex at a restaurant and she's out for her birthday dinner and she realizes as she meets this Alex that they are birthday twins. So they're both out celebrating their birthday, they become friends. Alex runs like a podcast interviewing I'm gonna say celebrities, I can't quite remember, but she interviews women and Josie seems to think that she's got the story to tell and that it'll be well worth Alex's time interviewing her. And then it just goes all downhill from there, but I got absolutely hooked and I highly recommend this if you're into psychological thrillers and especially if you're a fan of Lisa Jewell because she, again, can do no wrong. The next one I read in September was Dark Ride by Lou Burney. Now this was the one that I showed that was quite little but it actually took me longer than expected to read. It's not my favourite, I did however really like Hardly, so Hardly is the main character in this book. He's quite, not young, well no he is young, he's in his early 20s and he sees these two kids out and he notices some marks on them and he's worried that they're being abused and then he kind of takes on the role of trying to save these children without actually knowing what they're going through. And so the story follows along hardly in his quest to try and save these children basically and yeah I guess the twists I didn't see coming and I was sad by the end of it so I do recommend picking this one up. The next one that I read is The Art Thief by Michael Finkel. Now this is a bit different for me to read. I actually requested this one as a review copy because I was quite intrigued. It's about the true story of the world's most prolific art thief who accumulated a collection worth almost one billion pounds. Now I just couldn't believe that anyone could you know get away with stealing this much art and other items for so long and because it's based on a true story I think that's why I was so intrigued to read it. The lighting keeps coming in and out because I am using natural lighting and there's a lot of clouds in the sky so I apologize ahead of time for the darkness lightness. But yes I really enjoyed this and again it's not very big and it, I do like the fact that it shows like the items that he actually stole. He was a man who did not steal these items for resale. He stole them because he loved them and wanted to keep them. So yeah, it was interesting. The next one that I read is called Mother's Instinct by Barbara Abel. Now, this one is going to become a movie. I think I shared it in one of my other videos, but this was so messed up. And I have seen a few reviews where people have said they didn't enjoy it because they didn't have kids and they couldn't quite relate to it. 
me having kids, I just thought it was absolutely messed up and I yeah, didn't see the ending coming. I'm really interested to watch the movie now to see what they do with it and it was just so messed up. Like it was two families that got to know each other before they even had kids, they became friends, they were neighbours and then they fell pregnant at the same time and started bringing up their two sons together and then things start to go wrong and accidents start to happen to one of the sons and mm, it's just, oh, it's sad and it's messed up. So yeah, I mean, I'd highly recommend reading it, but I would go in with caution because it does involve child death and like abuse almost and yeah death so that was that one the next one that i read is called the water's dead by katherine lee now as i said this is a new zealand author and katherine was very kind to send me this to review and i really really enjoyed it it was based up north here in Aotearoa, New Zealand, and it followed a detective, Nairi Bradshaw. I'll just make sure that I've got that. Yeah, D.I. Nairi Bradshaw. They find a dead girl who first they identify as being Pākehā, so European, and then because she's got a mokokoi, so that's the tamoko on, on the chin, they realize that she is Māori. Now, I mean, that's up to debate. I, I would probably say that you can't just assume that just because she's got that, that she is definitely Māori. But she is, and it kind of follows along the journey of trying to find her murderer and also a missing child who she babysat. Now, this missing child is diabetic and doesn't have her insulin, and yeah, I guess it's like a race against the clock to try and find this little girl, as well as the murderer, and yeah, I really enjoyed it. I think it showed different aspects of the, like, Māori community and culture, where, you know, when someone passes away, there is, I guess, like, a sensitivity around the body itself, and under Māori culture, they want the body fully intact, they don't like... I guess autopsies done where potentially you're going to miss body parts and also they like to uplift the body straight away to have a tangi which is like a three-day funeral um, and they tend to like the body buried um, where the family chooses and I have ran into that before in my old job uh, where I dealt with estates and you know, it, it can it can get quite messy, but I think that Catherine highlighted the importance of cultural beliefs around that, and you know, she didn't. I don't think that there was anything insulting or wrong with what she covered. I think it was very necessary, and it happened. So I really enjoyed it, and I love just being able to read books that are based in New Zealand, and it's a thriller, so. I enjoyed it. Thank you, Kathy. The next two books that I read, I don't actually have in my hands because my mother is reading them. Uh, one of them is The Rule of Three. Now, I read the whole thing. I'm a huge believer in DNFing books if you're not enjoying them. Life's too short to keep going. But I... I still don't think I know how I feel about that book. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't great. It was quite repetitive. And, yeah. I'm not really too sure what more I can say about it. Yeah, so it, it follows, like, a girl who... Well, it actually follows multiple people, but... There's, like, a creepy, you know, the rule of three kind of... What would you call it? Like... A curse kind of thing and each person has kind of lost someone to something and another person in their family to something and then they kind of think oh I'm next because of the rule of three and from there you kind of follow all these different people where these things could happen to them and there's 
letters from each person kind of saying that they're trying to save the next person from the rule of three getting them too and it was just I don't know I I think they didn't need to follow as many people as they did in the book but that's just my own personal opinion my mum's reading it at the moment and I think she said she's about three quarters of the way through and she's feeling the same as me so I'd be interested to see if you have read that one how your thoughts were or you know do you think they did that for a reason but yes that's that one and the last one that I read in September is Call Me Evie by JP Pomari. Now, I went to the Māori Writers Festival here in Rotorua, New Zealand, a couple of weeks ago. And so we got to see Josh Pomari, who's JP Pomari, in person. And he talked about some of his books and his journey into writing. And I got to get one of my books signed that I'd read by him, but I actually own quite a few of them. I just haven't read them all. So... When I got back from that weekend, I ended up diving sh straight into Call Me Evie, and oh man, that was such a good book. I was absolutely hooked throughout it. It follows a young girl who something happens to her in Australia, and she ends up getting taken by this person on the run, I guess you should say, to New Zealand. And of all places, they end up in Makatu, which is quite like a little small beach town, uh, not far from where I live actually. And yeah, they hide out there and you don't know who this, I'll say man, because it is man. You don't know who this man is. She doesn't name him. So she kind of, well, she, she calls him a name. I can't think it was Jim, is it Jim? I can't remember, but she refers to him as a name that's not actually his name. It's just messed up. You think that he's caring about her and you think, oh, it must be someone really close. And then he's really, he comes out being really dangerous and he kind of puts all these different things in her head about what had happened back in Australia with this crime. And yeah, it was just really, really messed up. And the ending, I did not see coming. So I feel like it's one of those ones where you just get thrown off the course and I didn't guess the person who had her captive and I also didn't see the actual ending coming so I really liked it and so Josh Pomari is up there with one of my you know all-time fave New Zealand authors now yeah, he just writes crime and thrillers so well I have a few more that I'm going to actually add to my list this month in October and yeah, all in all, I feel like September was really good. I enjoyed it. I also was reading Tomorrow, Tomorrow, Tomorrow in September. I did. I finished it, however, this month. And then I kind of went into like a little bit of a slump, a bit of funk. I tried to start about four to five books and I'd read the first maybe 20 pages, maybe not even that, and I was just like, nah, can't do it. I just couldn't do it. And... I really enjoyed Tomorrow, Tomorrow, Tomorrow. And I just feel like it was one of those ones where I was like, where to from here? So I've dived back into my thrillers to pull me out of that funk. And it's all right because it's October, it's spooky season, and I just feel like it's time to read, I don't know, thrillers, scary, creepy, psychological thrillers. I don't know if I can do horrors, but I do have a bunch of Stephen King books here that I could jump into but I'm also a bit of a wimp when it comes to things like that. Can't watch horrors. Have watched a lot of horrors when I was younger but by choice now I just can't do it anymore. I'd love to but I just get too scared and my husband's the same. He is just as scared so it would be we put the movie on and he leaves and I nah can't do that. I need to see I need someone to be scared with me and Probably won't end up protecting me later on if anything happens. <laughs> Both of us would be no good. No good. Um, but yeah, I had a really good September. So I would love to know what your favourite book of September was. 
is there something that you could recommend for October for me? Yeah, I hope that you managed to read something and it doesn't matter if you didn't, it doesn't matter how many books you read. What matters is that you found time to even open a book, but even then, if you didn't, who cares? I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you get inspiration to pick one of these books up and if you do let me know but yeah have an amazing day and I will talk to you in my next video. See you later!